Welcome to Drawing NCT Dream as Animal Crossing characters. Now, because the footage was so much, I actually had to split it into two videos. So this part one video will have Hechan, chan la and Jisoo. It's mentioned in the graphics on screen that unfortunately some of my screen recording got uh, lost, let's say, or my screen recorder may or may not have crashed without me noticing. So I think the latter end of Hechan and also the latter end of Jisung is not available for watching, but you can kind of see what I did with Chunla and just sub it in, I guess. <laughs> Thank you for watching and due to popular request, I will be reading a fanfiction, short and fluffy, with no romance, just something cute. Just Take a Breath, Love, by Raging Calm on Archive of Our Own. The summary is, sometimes Dong Hyuk's head was full of irrational thoughts. Sometimes he felt terribly insecure and lonely. He stopped seeing all the good in himself and started focusing only on the bad. He felt like he was worthless, like he was a waste of space. Or, six times when Dong Hyuk was hurting and the dreamy stepped in to comfort him. The original author did disclaim that they don't actually know what Dong Hyuk's life is like, and they're not saying that he feels like this, this is just their interpretation of the stress and struggles that idols have to deal with, and their own experiences. Number 1. Jeno. Something was wrong with Dong Hyuk. His movements were sluggish and heavy, nowhere near as powerful and smooth as they usually were. He was dragging behind the beat. He seemed exhausted like he was forcing himself through the choreography. Jeno frowned. He had been watching Dong Hyuk out of the corner of his eye for the past hour of practice, and he wasn't getting any better. In fact, he was getting worse. Dong Hyuk looked like he was ready to collapse at any moment. When the song came to an end, Jeno paused the music and turned to the members. How about we take five? All the members nodded, heading over to various corners of the practice room to grab some water and rest. All the members, except for Dong Hyuk. He remained in the middle of the studio, running through the moves again, even though he had to know what wasn't doing him any good. Hey. Jenna laid his hand on Dong Hyuk's shoulder, his voice gentle. You've been working really hard, Hyukka. Why don't you come take a break with the rest of us? Dong Hyuk shook his head, breathing heavily. I have to get this right. You'll never get it right if you keep pushing yourself like this. Come on, give it a rest for just five minutes. Dong Hyuk lowered his head and exhaled softly. All right, five minutes. Feeling immensely relieved, Jeno grabbed Dong Hyuk's hand and led him over to their belongings. He rummaged through his bag for a water bottle and handed it to Dong Hyuk, who drank greedily. Better? Jeno asked. Dong Hyuk nodded, but he didn't look much better. Are you all right, Dong Hyuk? I'm fine, Dong Hyuk assured him. He tried for a smile, but it was too weak to fool anyone. You sure about that? Jenna raised an eyebrow. Okay, I'm a little tired, Dong Hyuk admitted, but that's it. I swear I'm alright. 
Chenner didn't believe it for a second. Come here. He scooted in front of Dong Hyuk and put a hand on his forehead. Hyuk, Jenner sighed. You're burning up. Am I? Dong Hyuk didn't look too surprised. He mostly just looked exhausted. Yes. Jenner grabbed his phone, already typing out a message to the manager. I'm taking you back to the dorms. You don't have to, Dong Hyuk protested. I can stay here until you guys finished. No way, Jenner said, with conviction in his voice. You're coming with me. He got to his feet and extended his hands to Dong Hyuk. Dong Hyuk sighed, but he grabbed Jenner's hands. Jenner pulled him to his feet and wrapped an arm around Dong Hyuk to support him. Can you walk? Dong Hyuk nodded, though he was blinking rapidly as if trying to keep the world in focus. Jenner's heart clenched with worry. At least it was a short walk back to the dorm, and if worst came to worst, he could always carry Dong Hyuk there. He turned to the rest of the members. Dong Hyuk's sick, I'm taking him back to the dorms. Don't do anything stupid while we're gone, okay? The members nodded, their faces unusually serious. Jenna knew they'd be okay. Feel better soon, Dong Hyuk Kang. Chun Lo called as they walked through the door. I will, Dong Hyuk responded, but it was so quiet that Jenna knew he was the only one who had heard. As the pair slowly made their way to the dorm, Jenna braided himself. How could he not notice sooner? He'd been watching Dong Hyuk, and he knew something was up, but he didn't say anything till now. It was his job to take care of the members. Jenna couldn't help but feel like he'd failed Dong Hyuk. He was supposed to be the leader, but what kind of leader didn't notice one of their members was sick until it was too late? If it waited any longer, Dong Hyuk may have actually passed out. He knew how busy Dong Hyuk's schedule was. He had literally no break in between promotions. Jenna should have been paying closer attention. Hey, Dong Hyuk's voice broke Jenna out of his thoughts. He spoke softly, but deliberately. I know what you're thinking. Don't blame yourself, Dinoya. I should have told you that I wasn't feeling well. But you're my responsibility, Hyuk. I should have noticed you were sick sooner. I'm sorry. I let you down. Jenna's shoulders felt heavy with guilt. He looked down at the sidewalk as they walked, unwilling to look at Dong Hyuk. Don't you dare say that, Jenna Lee. Jenna looked up in surprise. Dong Hyuk's eyes were fierce, his voice steady. You're the best damn leader this team could ever ask for. You do so much for all of us. We would be lost without you, and even if you do make mistakes sometimes, it's all right. Nobody's perfect. Look, we both messed up here. I've been pushing myself too hard lately, but it's not your fault. So you are not allowed to blame yourself for me getting sick, okay? Okay. Jenner nodded, looking Dong Hyuk in the eye. He still felt a little guilty, but Dong Hyuk had eased most of the weight from his shoulders. Dong Hyuk smiled at him, and it was much more genuine than before. This time, Jenna smiled back. Soon enough, they arrived at the dorms. Jenna breathed a sigh of relief that they made it back and led Dong Hyuk to his own room. He helped Dong Hyuk take off his shoes and then lifted the covers of his bed for him. Dong Hyuk looked back at him, unsure, but Jenna just gestured to the bed. Dong Hyuk climbed in, and Jenna tucked him in gently. I'm going to get some medicine, okay? When Jenna returned with the medicine and a glass of water, Dong Hyuk's eyes were already closed. Jenna couldn't help the fun smile that spread across his face. Dong Hyuk always looked adorable when he was asleep. He sat down on the bed next to Dong Hyuk and shook him gently. Luckily, he wasn't fully asleep yet, just dozing off. Hmm? Dong Hyuk mumbled. He looked up at Jenna sleepily. What is it? I brought you your medicine, sleepy. Jenna teased, but his voice was impossibly fond. Here. He extended the pill to Dong Hyuk, who popped it in his mouth. Jenner held the glass of water to Dong Hyuk's lips as he swallowed the medicine. Jenner set the glass down on the nightstand and reached out to run a hand through Dong Hyuk's hair. Go back to sleep, okay? Jenner whispered. Okay, Dong Hyuk replied, his eyes already falling shut again. I gotta go, Jenner said, getting up, but I promise I'll be back when you wake up. Wait, Dong Hyuk called out as Jenner opened the door, and when Jenner looked back, Dong Hyuk was looking right at him. I love you. Jenner smiled back, his heart warm. I love you too, Hyuk, and that is the end of the Jenner portion of this fanfiction.
Part two, Jisung. He'd woken up several minutes earlier for no apparent reason, and he couldn't fall back asleep. He didn't really want to get out of bed, but he could use some water. Besides, it was better than tossing and turning in bed for who knew how long, trying to ignore his dry throat. Jisung grabbed his phone and climbed down the ladder of the bunk bed, trying to be as quiet as he could to avoid waking Jimin. Using his phone as a flashlight, Jisung crept towards the kitchen. Upon entering, Jisung couldn't stop himself from screaming a little bit. There was already someone in the kitchen. The person looked up at Jisung, their face illuminated by the dim light of Jisung's phone. Oh, it's you, said Jisung with a sigh of relief. He held a hand to his chest and felt his heart rate beginning to return to normal. You scared me, Hyung. Sorry, Jisung ah. Dong Hyuk smiled crookedly at Jisung. He was sitting at the counter with a mug and had been scrolling through his phone before Jisung came in. I didn't mean to scare you, Dong Hyuk continued. What are you doing up anyway? I, uh, I just came to get some water, Jisung remembered. Woke up and couldn't go back to sleep. Let me get it for you, Dong Hyuk said, standing up. I did just scare you out of your wits a minute ago, after all. I wasn't that scared, Jisung pouted. Yes, you were, said Dong Hyuk. But he spoke in a fond tone, not a condescending one. Fine, Jisung admitted. He sat down at the counter next to where Dong Hyuk had been sitting. A few minutes later, Dong Hyuk set down a glass of water in front of Jisung and sat back down. Jisung sipped the water gratefully, then turned his attention to Dong Hyuk. Why are you awake, Young? Same as you, Jisung. Huh? I woke up not too long ago and came here to get something to drink, said Dong Hyuk. But he wasn't looking at Jisung. Instead, he studied his mug of tea, as if it held all the answers to the universe. You're not telling the truth, Jisung deduced. He thought for a moment, then gasped with realization. Did you never go to sleep? Jisung checked the time on his phone frantically. It's four o'clock in the morning, Hyung. You should be in bed. I know. Dong Hyuk's voice was empty. So what are you doing up? Jisung demanded. It doesn't matter, Dong Hyuk snapped. He slumped over the counter and put his head in his hands. Just go back to bed, Jisung. No, Jisung said stubbornly. I'm not leaving you here alone in the dark. Tell me what's wrong. You want to know what's wrong, Jisung? Dong Hyuk finally faced him, his eyes blazing and his voice angry. Everything. I tried going to sleep, but my brain would shut up about every single stupid mistake I made today and every little thing that's wrong with me. I'm so fucking tired. But my brain won't stop running. It just keeps pointing out every little flaw that I have and telling me why I don't deserve to be an idol. The fans deserve someone more talented, someone more hardworking, someone more handsome, someone better. How can I possibly live up to everyone's expectations? Jisung blinked in response. It had been a while since he'd seen Dong Hyuk like this. He was always so happy, always smiling. It was rare that he expressed any sort of negative emotion. But, Jisung supposed, all this must have been bubbling under the surface, waiting to explode. Usually, it was Jisung who broke down and cried. It was Dong Hyuk and the other Hyungs who comforted him. But if Dong Hyuk needed comfort this time, Jisung was more than willing to give it back. You can't, Jisung said calmly. Look. Dong Hyuk Hyung, you can never live up to those expectations because they're impossible. It's not our job to be perfect. It's our job to just try our best and do as well as we can. We all mess up sometimes. You don't have to beat yourself up over every little mistake, Hyung. And any real fan of ours will accept that we're not perfect. We're only human after all. I know that, but it's not that easy, Jisoo. Look at me, Hyung. Jisoo grabbed Dong Hyuk's hands and squeezed. Dong Kyo looked at him with teary eyes. Jisung's heart clenched, but he pressed on. I know it's hard to accept your flaws, but look, I accept you and all of who you are. Even if you aggravate me and drive me crazy sometimes, I would never change anything about you. And I know the rest of the members feel the same way. I promise you, we all love you for who you are, and will always be there to support and encourage you, no matter what happens. Tears were flowing freely down Dong Kyo's face now. He let out a quiet sob and launched himself forwards into Jisung's chest. Jisung untangled his hands from Dong Hyuk's and wrapped his arms around Dong Hyuk's body. As Dong Hyuk trembled and shook, Jisung held him tight. It's okay, Jisung murmured into Dong Hyuk's neck. Just let it out. Jisung sighed, wishing he could do more to make his young feel better. He knew as well as anyone all the struggles and pressure that came with being an idol. It made even the strongest of them break sometimes. But this was the path that both of them had chosen. So for now, all they could do was cling on to each other and weather the storm together. 
Eventually, Dong Hyuk's sobs faded and his breathing stabilized. He stopped trembling, but he clung onto Ji Sung as tightly as before. Hey, Ji Sung whispered, I think it's time for us to go to sleep. Don't want to let go, Dong Hyuk said, his voice muffled. You don't have to, said Ji Sung softly. Come on, let's go to your bed. I'll sleep with you tonight. Okay, Dong Hyuk agreed. He finally detached his body from Ji Sung, but grabbed his hand again and held it tight. Dong Hyuk got to his feet shakily, and Ji Sung reached out to steady him. The two of them walked to Dong Hyuk's bedroom hand in hand. Once they were under the covers, Dong Hyuk wrapped himself around Ji Sung again. Ji Sung didn't mind, and if Ji Sung clung on to Dong Hyuk just as tightly, well, that was between the two of them. As Ji Sung felt himself starting to drift off, Dong Hyuk whispered into his ear, When did you get so wise, Ji Sung? Ji Sung's eyes were closed, but he smiled anyway. It's because I've got the best youngs in the world, he answered back. You teach us just as much, Dong Hyuk mumbled. He shifted closer to Ji Sung, if that was even possible. Ji Sung's hold on Dong Hyuk tightened. Good night, Hyung. Good night, Ji Sung Ah. And that is the end of Ji Sung's chapter. Part 3. Chunla Chunla could tell that today was going to be a rough day. It was early morning and they had a full day of schedules, but right now the dream members were in the car on their way back to the studio. Everyone was in various states of consciousness. Don Jun and Jeno were talking quietly. Ji Sung and Jamin looked like they were drifting off. And Dong Hyuk, well, he was leaning on the car door with his eyes closed, but he kept shifting around in his seat every few seconds. It looked like he was trying to fall asleep, but he was too agitated to do so. Chun La chewed on his lower lip. He was worried. He'd heard noises in the kitchen last night, and this morning Ji Sung had told him it was him and Dong Hyuk. Apparently they'd been having a hard time sleeping, and Ji Sung basically had to drag him to bed. Chun La didn't want to bother Dong Hyuk, but he had to do something to help. Hesitantly, he rested his head on Dong Hyuk's shoulder, carefully slid one arm behind him and placed the other in front clasping his hands together and effectively wrapping Dong Hyuk in his arms. As Chun La made himself comfortable, he heard Dong Hyuk let out a small sigh of contentment. He'd stopped fidgeting and his breathing was getting slower. Chun La smiled to himself. It had worked. The car ride wouldn't be very long, but at least Dong Hyuk could get a little bit of rest. They all knew he needed it. Chun La closed his eyes too and let himself drift off. Way too soon, he felt someone tapping on his shoulder. Chun La, yeah? Jenny said, We're here now, wake up. Chun La groaned. He did not want to be awake, but he reluctantly distangled himself from Dong Hyuk and unbuckled his seatbelt. He turned to Dong Hyuk, still asleep, and shook him gently. Hyung, we have to go. Dong Hyuk muttered something unintelligible, but opened his eyes and sat upright. He fumbled with his seatbelt, then the car door, and then they were outside in the sunshine. Dong Hyuk squinted and grabbed Chun La's arm. It's too bright, he mumbled. Chun La agreed, but since he was the more awake one of the two, he pulled Dong Hyuk along towards the studio. They were doing a live radio show today. Chun La was glad that the environment would be pretty relaxed, but of course they would still have to be funny and entertaining. 
As idols, they always had to be happy and cheerful. They could never show that they were tired or upset or angry. They had to filter everything. It was difficult, especially with zero sleep. Luckily, they had about half an hour before the broadcast started. Chandler dropped off Don Kyok in the waiting room with the rest of the members and went off in search of coffee. He found the break room easily enough, as they'd been there before, and made two coffees relatively quickly. When he got back to the waiting room, Don Kyok looked a little more awake. He was playing a game on his phone, though he messed up more often than he usually did. Chandler sat next to Don Kyok and placed the two coffees on the table in front of him. When Don Kyok didn't react, he cleared his throat and gestured towards the coffee. Don Kyok shot Chandler a grateful smile and picked up the cup closest to him. Did you put in two sugars and a splash of milk? Yep. Chandler grinned at Don Kyok and grabbed his own cup. I know how you like your coffee, Hyun. Thanks, Chandler. Yeah. Don Kyok reached out and ruffled Chandler's hair. I really needed this. No problem, Chandler replied, feeling inexplicably content. The two of them sat there quietly, drinking coffee while enjoying each other's company and ignoring whatever chaos was going on around them. Ji Sung and Non Jin were loudly bickering about something, but Chun was used to it by now. By the time they had to go to the studio, Dong Kyuk was definitely looking better. There was even a small bounce in his step as they walked over, though Chun had no idea where the energy came from. When they sat down, Chun made sure to choose the seat next to Dong Kyuk. He grabbed Dong Kyuk's hand underneath the table and squeezed it in silent support. It was time. The broadcast was going well, actually. Don Kyok was smiling and laughing, and nobody could tell it was a little less bright than usual. Chanla made sure to keep his own energy high and to talk more frequently in order to take some of the pressure off Don Kyok. Don Kyok was a natural born entertainer, but even he had his limits. The rest of the members did well too. Even though Chanla knew they were all tired, they didn't show it. Sometimes when Chanla thought Don Kyok's energy was waning, he'd squeeze Don Kyok's hand or rub his thumb across the back of it reassuringly. He knew how much Don Kyok loved physical affection. Chandler hoped he was helping, even if it was only a little bit. The rest of the day continued in a similar manner. The members were shuttled around to various venues to give interviews and entertain. Through it all, Chandler stuck by Dong Hyuk. He gave Dong Hyuk encouraging little touches and compliments, and he talked and laughed as much as he could. Chandler might have been tired too, but it was worth it if Dong Hyuk felt a little less pressured. By the time they got back to the dorm, it was late afternoon and everyone was ready to crash. Jeno and Jamin collapsed on the couch and started a movie. Ji Sung and Nan Jin went to their room, presumably to sleep. Chun La expected Dong Hyuk to go with them, but he followed Chun La to the kitchen. Hey Chun La, said Dong Hyuk, yawning and stretching his arms above his head. Thanks for helping me out today. I really appreciate it. And even though the two of them had been together basically all day, he reached out and yanked Chun La into a hug. He pressed his face into Chun La's neck and rubbed his hand soothingly on Chun La's back. Chandler relaxed into Dong Hyuk's embrace. Honestly, being hugged by Dong Hyuk was one of the best things in the world. He just had a way of making you feel so loved and supported, so happy and warm inside. There was nowhere else Chandler would rather be right now. Anytime, Hyung, Chandler mumbled. He really didn't want to let go. Just then, Dong Hyuk's stomach growled. They both laughed. You want to get some food, Chandler, yeah? How about I make some ramen? Wow, the famous Chandler ramen. Dong Hyuk chuckled. I feel so special. You deserve it, Chun La said, squeezing Dong Hyuk tighter. You did so well today, Hyung. And that is the end of part three, Chun La. The next three parts will be in the next video, so please stay tuned.
Thank you so much for watching, and stay tuned for part two.